Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about sections, labels, and status. And by talk, I mean I talk, and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So sections are found in the inspector, which is this pane over here. If this is not on your Scrivener, try finding this button and toggling it on and off, and then it will pop up. So this is your inspector and then come up here right into the middle of this little tag and that's your metadata tab. Down in the metadata tab, we've got section types right here. If you watched my quick start video and you saw me recommend that you use a preset template, this is one of the reasons why. Because when you click on this section type, all of these different sections will pop up um, that are preset. And let me show you all what it looks like when you don't do that. So this, here is my script <laughs> for this, I guess. And this is not, I just opened up kind of a blank one. And so if you come over here to section, it's only got these things in it. So if you want to do that all on your own, you can and, and do these all by hand. But if you choose a template, they'll just pop up for you. So why not? Uh, work smart, not hard. In my quick start video, I talk about how section types are really important when we are compiling later. You click on different scenes or chapters, or folders, then you can kind of watch over here, watch this change. So I, for the part, it's a part heading. I'm gonna come down here, right here, and this is designated as a chapter heading. And then when I come down here, this is a scene. So these are all set up differently in your compile area. So if we go up here to compile, file, compile, and then this will pop up. And here for the section headers, as you can see, this over here shows us everything that's been checkmarked into the compile. Oh, the title page. All right, so check that back on. We want to include the title page, um, which is designated as front matter. And over here, um, we can kind of see the different ways that things are arranged. So the front matter page will look like this. So the page breaks up here. And front matter will just start up at the top with a tab in. Will be Times New Roman. And so it's kind of neat. It just shows you what it's all about. Part headings will look like this. Chapter headings will look like this. And so on and so forth. Now I am going to talk in a later video about how to edit all of this. Um, but that is a little bit more involved, and so I will not be talking about that just yet. Just so you are aware, this is how you can kind of see how everything is laid out. And then this over here is how we can look into what it's going to look like. So come in here and we see edit, it'll say, no, you can't do that. So I'm going to show you all how to do that in a later video. Let's get out of here. So that was the sections. And again, these are not super duper important. If you just want to get in and start writing, um, click on structure based and it will do its best to assign what it thinks your sections need to be based upon how they are nested over here. And as you drag things around, it'll, it'll change them, you know, so, um, trust Scrivener. It's pretty smart about this kind of thing. If you have, um, special font sizes or something, then again, in a later video, I will show you all how to edit those. So I've got all my sections listed here. Now, if I want to add something or take something away, like let, let's say like, I don't have a table of contents, who cares? I'm never going to use that. So I'm going to get rid of it just to clean this up. So I'm going to go in here to edit and this screen pops up. We're going to be using this screen a lot. Um, so up here, section types, and we can see this list here. So table of contents, who needs it? Minus. That's easy. That there we go, uh, and off it goes. Um, but let's say that we oh no wait, we need a table of contents. Whoops! So click on plus the table of contents, and it's back. So okay, and here it is down at the bottom. So if I want to drag it up here and move around, all right. So that's how we get our section types kind of scootled around. 
And this will show you, like I said, um, in the kind of, um, if you let Scrivener just do its thing and, and structure base your, um, your section types, it will do it according to this order and you can drag these around if you want to change them. So like over here, you can see this is highlighted. So title, characters, place, etc., And it's NA just because these are more, um, you know, uh, folders for the manuscript and then also your character sheets and your settings sheets and stuff like that. Um, it's not something that needs, it's these particular things are not going to be compiled, so it doesn't need a section. But level one folders, click on those and it's a highlight. So these are the parts. Anything beyond, like outside of this particular nested area, so this is your manuscript and then characters, places, all of these down here do not get compiled. Um, so we can kind of ignore this stuff down here when we're talking about compiling. It'll be this piece up here. So level one folders, which are your parts in this particular template, which I said, which I, I selected, um, which here we go, part heading. But if we wanted to change this to something different, just a regular heading or a chapter heading, we can do that in here and it will forever um, come, assign it that particular section in the structure base like auto assignment. Now level two folders and these are chapters um, so there are chapter headings. Um, if you want to change it to something else again that's how you do it. Now we will move on to labels which are awesome and amazing and um, one of my favorite or I guess not favorite but most used features of Scrivener, one of the reasons why I got hooked on it the way I did. So down here, hey look, look, haha, down here this is the label um, kind of area when you're in your program. So if we click on this, so my screen cuts off the bottom, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this menu, it says edit at the bottom. And um, now if you are in here and you want to know how to get into the labels list, Again, you can hit edit on here, but then this is your labels area down here. Um, and mine's gonna cut off because I have my um, my screen kind of minimized, but it's just this menu, you go all the way to the bottom and it says edit dot dot dot, and then it brings up this screen again. So in your labels list, I arranged my labels based on the seven point plot structure that I have a video on that I'm gonna link up here somewhere. And um, so I like to have a nice, clean, very easy to access visual representation of my pacing, essentially. So I can take a look at my, so you can see this is red, over here red, these are designated red, so these are my hook scenes, this is my plot turn one scene, this is my pinch scene, or my um, midpoint scene. So I can kind of glance over here and go, oh, I didn't make anything to pinch, okay. And put something right in here uh, that is my pinch. My pinch one, and this is this just ensures that I, um, you know, my my hook isn't too short or too long, my pinch two isn't in the wrong place, etc. Um, you can assign labels basically any way you want. I know that some people, um, if they have multiple POV stories, they'll assign their different POV characters in here. You know, character A, character B, character C. Um, so that they can keep track of what their uh, characters, like the back and forth for their um, their POV chapters. I do that, but I do it in a different way. I do not do it with the labels because you can't do, um, you only have one set of labels. You can't have multiple different types of labels that you can use um, in different ways, but you can have a bunch of different keywords. And I use that, in which we will discuss in a later video. I'm going to say that a lot. I will be talking about that in a later video because some of the stuff is just so broad and deep and I need a, a whole different video. This is already getting kind of long. Anyway, so that is how I do my um, labels and you can do them in any way you want. And you can also edit the color. So if you want to change the name of the label, you just double click and change it that way. I don't want to change it that's how we do it anyway and if you want to change the color you just click on where the color is and double click the color and a color wheel will pop up 
You can do the wheel, you can do the grayscale site, you can do whatever. And then also, if you want to do the dropper, you can borrow the color from wherever. Okay, so now we're going to do status down in this corner right here. No status to do in progress, first draft, and so on. So this, again, this menu down, edit at the bottom, which I cut off because I'm a gremlin. And here we are back in this amazing window, section types, label list, status list. So you can change this custom title to something different if you want to. Unlike the label list, these don't get color coordinated. So you can have colors on here, but not on here. And this is so to do in progress, etc. If you've got different statuses or if you have something different that you want to use this for completely, like go for it. With all of these menus down here, we've got the plus and the minus. So if you want to get rid of something, hit the minus. If you want to add something, hit the plus. But boom, it's that easy. How you can use these, because because you'd think, okay, so I've got these designated as draft, first draft, um, finished, needs revision, etc. But do I have to like click through all these? So no status, no status, first draft, revised draft, done. Like, do I have to click through and look down here and see what they all are? You don't. So let's click up here. So this is the Scrivening's view. This is the Corkboard view. And this is the Outliner view. So let's go to the Outliner. I can do that real fast and drag this over so we can see more of it. So. You see in here, this I, I titled my label Serial is cool because I'm a dork, but um, this is usually what it would say labels. So these are all of the things. Um, again, up here, you know, it cuts off above characters, places, front matter because only this up here is going to get compiled. This is considered your technical manuscript. So that's the only thing that shows up in here. Um, my part one, my part two, different chapters, and then the scenes within the chapters. And if I have designated any of them, whatever um, part of the story, uh, my labels are here. And so I can look at a glance and go, okay, here they all are. Um, and then status, look at a glance, here they all are. So if I've got a whole bunch designated as done, and then one of them says, you know, in progress or to do, it's really easy to just be able to look down this list and see, oh, okay, I have to do that one. Oh, I have to do this one. And um, kind of have that targeted you know I only have half an hour to write today I need to do the done thing and then um, you're scrolling through like which one did I have to work on but you can come up here to the outliner and see the, the whole thing <laughs> you can also check out your section types here and if you have assigned each chapter these types of things you'll see them here again we will cover those in a later video <laughs> there's um, more functionality to the outliner view but Later video, the outliner gets its own video because I love the outliner. It's one of my favorite things about Scrivener. They're all my favorite thing about Scrivener. Let's be real here. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you learned something new about sections, labels, and status. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.